Welcome to the Parsha Perspective. Each week, we will delve deep in a weekly Torah portion to find a practical and insightful way to enhance your daily life. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Rabbi Shalom Yemini, and each week we'll look into the weekly Torah portion to find practical and insightful ways to enhance your daily life. This week's Parsha Perspectives in loving memory of Rachel Bas Reuven, Shlom ben Edward, and Edward ben Ephraim. May their souls be uplifted and may their memories be a blessing for their families. This week's Parsha Perspectives in honor of the Fua Shalema of Shaul ben Brita, Sasson ben Sal ben Batya, and Yerachmil Daniel ben Tova Basha. May they have a complete and speedy recovery. This week's Torah portion is Parshas Pinchas. Our Parsha begins with Pinchas, the grandchild of Aaron HaKohen, the high priest, receiving the reward for killing Zimri, the head of the tribe of Shimon. Zimri was publicly consorting with a Midianite princess, so Pinchas took a spear and ended both their lives. The reward that Pinchas received was the kahuna, the priesthood. The Talmud in Zavachim explains that when Hashem anointed Aaron and his four sons to the priesthood, he said that this appointment was for Aaron, his sons, and the future generations. Since Pinchas was already alive at the time of the anointing, he did not receive the priesthood. As a punishment for consorting with the Midianite girls, the Jewish Supreme Court killed over 160,000 people. God then commanded Moshe to go to war and destroy the nation of Midian for sending their women to trick the Jewish nation into serving idols. Moshe was subsequently asked to count how many Jewish people were left after all the executions, and the total was just above 600,000. When Moshe finished counting the Jewish nation, Hashem told him to go up Mount Evarim and to catch a glimpse of Israel's land, for he would not enter the land, and this was the only way of fulfilling his dream of entering the land of Israel. When Moshe came down, he asked God who would be his successor. He thought his children would succeed him as they did his brother Aaron, the high priest. Before Aaron went up the mountain to pass away, he gave his special priestly garments to Elazar, his son, who took over him. But God had a different plan. He told Moshe that his most devoted disciple, Yeshua ben Nun, would succeed him and take him over. However, a question comes to mind. Hashem chose Moshe's most devoted student to take over and lead the Jewish nation into the Promised Land. But why didn't Hashem choose either Gershom or Elazar, Moshe's two children, to succeed him? What would be with Moshe's legacy if his sons could not assume his role? The Rabbeinu Bechayr of Bachir ben Usher, a Spanish commentary, gives a deep and powerful explanation. He quotes Shlomo HaMelech in Mishle in Proverbs, says, He who tends to the fig tree will enjoy its fruits. He who cares for his teacher will be honored. The Rabbeinu Bechayr writes that Hashem chose Yeshua as reward for never departing from Moshe's immediate presence. Furthermore, the Rabbeinu Bechai clarifies that Moshe's children did not reside with him for many years. Instead, they lived with their mother Tzipporah and their grandfather Yisroi in Midian. As the Torah relates in Shemais that Yisroi, Moshe's father-in-law, took Tzipporah, Moshe's wife, after she was sent home, as well as his two sons, Gershon and Elazar, and began to travel to the Jewish camp in the desert. Yisroi sent word to Moshe and says, I, your father-in-law Yisroi, am coming to you with your wife and two sons. The Rabbeinu Bechai explains that Moshe's children could not succeed and take over him because they were not with the Jewish people the whole time. They did not experience the same hardships and miracles as the rest of the nation. And since a true leader needs to be sympathetic and empathetic to the difficulties of his people, Moshe's children cannot assume his role. However, the Nitziv Rav Naftali Tzvi Yehuda Berlin a famous Polish rabbi from the early 1800s gives a deeper and more profound explanation. He writes that the main character trait of a true leader is their ability to be courageous, bold, and independent. Since a leader, director, or commander has to make tough decisions that affect many people, their ability to walk alone is paramount to their success. The Nesid explains that we have two powerful examples of Yeshua's leadership capabilities. The first example is by the sin of the golden calf. Moshe was sent down Mount Sinai by Hashem to see how the Jewish people were serving the golden calf. And as Moshe made his way down, he encountered Yeshua at the foot of the mountain. And the Torah in Shemais recounts the unusual conversation that Yeshua had with Moshe when he met him. It says that Yeshua heard the rowdiness and chaos of the people and he turned to Moshe and he said, Is there a cry of war in the camp? And Moshe responded to him, No, it is the sound not of triumph or defeat, but rather the sound of song that I hear. The Ibn Ezra, the famous Spanish rabbi Avram Meir Ibn Ezra, explains that Yeshua had no idea what was going on with the Jewish nation, so he thought it was a cry of war. Since Moshe was his teacher and leader, and he went up the mountain, he stayed at the foot of the mountain the entire time. 
The rest of the nation went home when they could no longer see Moshe's figure in the clouds. However, Yeshua remained patiently and awaited his master's return. He did not follow the rest of the people. Instead, he chose to stay and be alone. And the second example we have is the episode of the spies' exploration of the land of Israel. Yeshua was one of 12 spies that Moshe sent to investigate and explore the land and its people. When they returned, 10 out of the 12 spies reported a grim situation, people dying and giants guarding the cities with powerful armies. However, Yeshua and one other spy took the opposite approach. They said that the land was indeed flown with milk and honey and ready for the Jewish people to conquer it and dwell in it. The Nitziv explains that Yeshua demonstrated his leadership capabilities and connection to Hashem in two significant and crucial points. And that is why Hashem chose Yeshua to lead the Jewish nation into Israel over Moshe's children, because he was ready to walk alone with God. In our daily life, it is imperative that we understand that it takes nothing to stand on the sidelines with the rest of the masses, but it takes real courage and determination to defend your beliefs and values to an ever-growing opposition. However, it is in those moments that your true self comes out and your soul shines. There's an amazing quote that I once heard. The secret to happiness is freedom, and the secret to freedom is courage. Have a great weekend and good Shabbos. Thank you for tuning in to The Parsha Perspective. Check out our website, theparshaperspective.com. Send thoughts and comments to theparshaperspective at gmail.com. Till next time, thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.